You are now in a sunken lane. It's a lane sunken in the ground. It's roughly halfway across no man's land. The trenches, the British ones were behind you. And this was normally um, fought over virtually every night. And the German trenches are about 200 meters that way. Tell me, if you possibly can, how it was possible to get 400 soldiers into this lane at night without the Germans seeing them from 200 meters that way. Any ideas how you could get 400 soldiers into this lane in the dark secretly? How about digging a tunnel? How about digging a tunnel? Because that's what they did. They dig a tunnel that comes out. Can you see that depression in the ground behind you? That's where it comes out. It's gone now because it was a tunnel until the afternoon of the 1st of July. Then they pulled the roof in and it became a trench. This then became Hunter's Trench, but you are now standing absolutely in that spot and they would come through. At midnight, soldiers on the inside were told by soldiers who'd come out here quietly, by torch, flash, 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 flash. It's clear, they broke out, 400 men then lined up in the lane so the Germans wouldn't see them. Now, if you were gonna be in this lane, where would you put yourselves to make sure the Germans don't see you and can't shoot you? Where do you put yourselves? Yeah, if you look over here, come up in a minute, you see they're against this bank where they are now. And of course, they're waiting for zero hour. What time was the attack on the 1st of July? 7.30, but not here. This is unique. You see, over there, and we're gonna go see it in a few minutes, they dug another tunnel, a much longer tunnel, over a thousand feet long, which actually then went to a mine. Pass you over to my colleague now, Steve, who'll show you what it looked like. Okay, uh, the cameraman, Jeffrey Maylins, who's filming here, has come through. He's filmed shots in the lane, and then at 20 past seven, he's back about 200 meters back, and he sets his camera up ready to film the explosion. There it is, you've all seen it. It appears in every documentary of the Great War, but it's the only mine explosion ever filmed. That's 40 tons, 40,000 pounds of explosives going up in the air. And when we go to the back down to where the coaches are parked, you'll see the clump of trees up on the hill on the left hand side. What then is going to happen is we now have to wait for 10 minutes. That 10 minutes, probably going to be the longest 10 minutes of the men's lives here, because they're going to spend that 10 minutes here thinking about what's going to happen. The other point is that that explosion has just done what? Alone the it's just told the Germans who have been expecting something to happen but didn't know quite when you've just given them 10 minutes notice that it's going to happen very very soon um, the reason that you've got the envelope is because it contains the fate of a soldier from this area not directly here but from this area the Battle of the Somme is half a million men a battalion is 850 in this lane there are 400 you now have one in your hand, one. And they're not all gonna die. Some will, some will not. The most common thing that was said, put your hand out, was see you on the other side. What does it mean? See you on the other side. <laughs> or that village. It's either of those. It's one of two things gonna happen, isn't it? Three blasts on the whistle, and that's the mark to go. Get out there, form up, and shift as fast as you can. <laughs> Okay, open up. <laughs> Who's you got? Oh, wow. How did you go? Captain Cecil Wells. Oh, wow. Ah, survived. That's so, right. His son was a special soldier and was killed at Dunkirk. Dead. Yeah. yeah. So you made it. I will, I'm dead. Dead. I died. Discharge, left the army, you were fine. You got away with it. What about you? In Holman Hammer. You're buried up in the village. Oh, I'm dead. Uh, so you're in, sorry, you're here. And you survived, yes? I'm dead. Good, good. How about you? I'm getting I'm a sergeant. Yeah, you died in 1985, so you, you made it. There you are. Yeah. What about you? I survived. Died, found a year later. You're, you're buried in Redan Ridge Cemetery. Redan Ridge Cemetery, you see those trees up there? That's where you are. 
Okay, um, we're now virtually two thirds of the way across no man's land. On the morning of the 1st of July, that patch of woodland there was full of German soldiers. There's a mass of trenches. The German front line ran across the road, up that bank, and then terminated where those trees are on top of the hill. By 7.22, that was an enormous crater, which we'll go to. At 7.30, the whistles blow and the men come this way. It's not far, really, from the coach to there, is it? It's a problem. The problem is very obvious. If we just come forward a bit and look to our left, you'll see something very special about this cemetery. And that is, it's actually on the edge of a bank. And that bank was there in 1916. And on the far side of the bank, where the cemetery is now, was masses and masses and masses of barbed wire. So the Germans up on the ridge, or the Germans there, didn't have to move the machine guns around to shoot them. They walked into it. They had no choice. If they were going to get forward, they would have to come. And the reason that the cemetery is there is that's because where all the bodies were then gathered, some of them after the war. So anybody buried in Beaumont Hamel Cemetery, this is the one you need to have a look at now.